Hi everybody, I see a lot of faces and you know what that means, anxiety, but I'll try my best. So today I made two promises in the title of my talk, the first of which is everything in one line. Any program you want in Python, uh, I can translate it to one line and I should teach you how to do this, the basics at least. The second one is the same thing, but only using lambdas. I assume that most of you should know what lambdas are in Python, but we'll get to it, obviously. Both of these uh, promises are, uh, I'll teach you just the basics, so in 30 minutes we'll all leave like uh, this room disappointed, but uh, uh, right now we both have the intention to have a good talk in, fr in front of us, so let's get started. Uh, this is my only slide, it's actually a lie, I have 29. But uh, I, I tried. Uh, the idea is that the whole presentation should have been a Kahoot. Unluckily, Kahoots are quite expensive. I'm from Genoa. I'm cheap. So I've rewritten, I've rewritten a Kahoot as a Python bot. So I would, uh, I'd like to ask you to actually connect to the Python bot. Um, you can just write any message to the bot. You can connect to data if you have it to the Wi-Fi. Just write it something because I'm really sorry, but this has to be an interactive presentation. You can't just stay there and watch me. You have to actually send a message. Uh, this is Telegram. So lambdas bot or t.me slash lambdas bot. Uh, 12 users. Uh, I think I see more than 12 people, so we can do better. 16. How many people are there? Like um, 40, I would say. I'll wait at least. All right, we're getting there. By the way, this is not the first time I do a presentation with this is my only slide as the title, but it's the first time where it's actually a lie. The last time I actually had just one slide and it was funnier. We're at 40, which is rather impressive. The Kahoot uh, free trial limit was 10 people. So I think I made the right choice in implementing everything in 90 minutes yesterday in quite a hurry. This presentation was not done at 3 a.m. today. I promise I have not slept for hours. Okay, let's get started. So how I said, let's uh, get started, and you're still writing the bot, so. This is the second slide, and if everything went correctly, you should have received the question, and you can now vote the answer. Uh, I will actually tell you the answer while you can still vote, but the first person to get it right actually gets more point, and the first three people will get this so I don't know if you like this but I've got three of them so the correct answer is actually we can't know yet because that's the only objectively correct one I mean we haven't had the talk yet so we can't know and now we're actually getting into the real interesting stuff uh, with this one. So it's very important that I say everything in one line, but it should rather be in one statement uh, or even better in one expression. Because uh, you could take any Python program and just use colons to make every, uh, everything fit in one line, but that's kind of cheating. So what we're going to do is just use expressions. And uh, the difference between a statement and, and uh, an expression is that you can fit an expression uh, within brackets as an example. That is an easy way to test this. One of these doesn't work if you put them in round brackets. You should find one, uh, the one, sorry. And of course, it's the assert, which usually doesn't have uh, brackets, and that's uh, a good sign. Everything else does actually work even if you write them inside another brackets or inside anything else. So the I actually forgot to sort the leaderboard by score. That could have been a good idea. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry about that. But it seems like uh, the guy in front here is currently leading. So next question. 
which is, sure, okay, we understood what expressions are, but how can we actually do multiple of them? Because uh, we can try to make every, uh, every line become an expression, but if we have multiple lines, we also need to evaluate multiple expressions. And these are all expressions, except uh, this one, which is obviously a syntax error, so I hope you didn't vote for this one. These three are actually uh, correct as expressions, but the issue with this one is that the first value, it doesn't always make sure that both of them get uh, executed, and same goes for this one. This one is the only one that actually guarantees you that both this one and this one will be executed. You're all voting for this one now. Okay, so OR is actually pretty useful. I very often use ORs, and, uh, but as I said, it doesn't always return, uh, it doesn't always make sure that both of them are actually executed. So the question is, when does OR make sure that both of them, both of your expressions will be evaluated? So the idea is that Python takes an OR expression, and first of all, it executes the expression on the left, and if the value is false, well, if it's true, that's it. Because or if the first value is true, we already know it's true. But if it's false, we have to check the second value as well. Which means that this is the only correct uh, choice. Because if the first value is false, then Python can't know yet the value of the or and has to check as well the second value. Did I put out the question yet? Did it work? Oh, I think the bot broke, finally. <laughs> that lasted way too long. Nice, it broke. Well, who was winning? Let's see, let's see, that guy. Okay, you're in a good way to get candies. So we'll now go raising hands like, you know, the old times where we hadn't like code and stuff. So this one, which one does not assign values to variable inside of an expression? So the, the idea is of course you usually uh, assign values to variables in statements using the equal sign, but that is not an expression. It won't work inside of uh, round brackets. So we need to do something else that does work for uh, to actually have an expression with some variables banded to a new value. All these, of, uh, all four of these, sounds like uh, feasible. The idea here with the lambda is to uh, actually immediately call the lambda to assign the two values to the arguments of the lambda, lambda, and expression inside of the lambda will be executed immediately with the values binding binded to what we called it with. This one also works actually, and the idea is that. Uh, Again, it ex executes the first one, then the second one, and then the third one. So these two actually assign immediately the value to A and B, and then we just return the last value, which is the, which is the expression we wanted. In this one, same thing. It's exactly the same thing. We just divided lambdas and used two calls. This one is actually broken. And the reason uh, this is broken is that this operator actually returns the new value, and this is one and it's not a false-ish value, which means that this will not return expression, but it will return one, because we are using the or, as I said previously. This kind of pattern that you see, it was supposed to be sent out to you via Telegram, so you can't actually see it. How, how nice of, <laughs> of this presentation. So uh, imagine this code, which I'm going to tell you, try to visualize it. L equals empty list for each element in a generator. If the element uh, meets some condition, then add a new element to the list that we created at the beginning. Which one of these should we actually use to transfer that to a single expression? Or is your hands? I'm sure that all of you know it, come on. 
yeah, indeed. But you have to see it, like, I can't just go through it, so. This is how uh, list compression works. I assume that you mostly know how to use this. Uh, you already know the answer. But uh, this one is slightly more complex, which is, uh, we can, can we do the same things for dictionary tables and sets? Which one of these are actually implemented in Python? Which one of these don't actually work? Again, raise your hands. Maybe you already know this, but slightly harder. Yeah, we don't actually have tuples indeed. And uh, it seems like we have with this one, but this one actually returns a generator and not a tuple, so it doesn't work. For this one, okay, what about importing things? Uh, we might want to do that. These are two options. Uh, this one and this one are both expressions, so they work inside of parentheses. But which one of these actually work as we expect it? Uh, meaning that we can uh, actually put a new, li a new line using the time dot sleep function. E you're putting one, which is this one, and it's indeed correct. Uh, the issue with this one is that it almost works, but uh, it actually returns the package as a value, and uh, to actually use it, we have to assign it to a variable, whereas this one actually imports it normally as we would expect. Of course, if you're trying to make everything in one expression, you should use this one and then assign the value uh, to a variable to later use. What about declaring functions? I think this uh, doesn't require that much explanation, so please raise your hands with your best guess. I see some two. Uh, the issue with this one, actually, is that the lambda is a true-ish value, which means that uh, when you get to the OR, the lambda is actually evaluated as true and it's returned net, whereas the expression is actually never, um, never even uh, evaluated. The correct one is indeed one. What about try except blocks? So. This one was actually proposed as a Python, a Python enhancement, uh, but it was rejected. Which one of these three do you think is the correct answer? Yeah, there's no easy way. Uh, and I know this sounds weird because I, I made just a promise to say any Python program. The fact that is that it's actually possible. You can do this, just not in an easy way. Uh, there's some... Uh, Python program that actually automatically does this for you. Uh, we'll get to it later. I, it does work, but unlikely if you have to manually convert something with a try except. Uh, maybe there is an easy way, but I don't know about it, and I just couldn't find it. So if there is, please tell me. Create an, creating a new class. Uh, this is slightly harder compared to what we usually do. So which one is it? Hands up. We've got a three, a zero, a one, a two, a four. Okay, so there, <laughs> there is a little more confusion. Uh, there is actually an easy way. Um, this one doesn't work because you can't write the dig property. Uh, and this one doesn't work because class doesn't actually exist like that. But you can use type to declare a new class. We usually use type to get the class of uh, um, an instance, but you can actually use m three parameters to say the name of the class, the base classes uh, from which to inherit from, and the properties that the class should have. So that one should work unless I trans tr transcribed it incorrectly while doing the slides, which could always happen. What ab about using if then else? Which one is this one? Yeah, it's indeed zero. Uh, this one is a nice option, but unlikely uh, we do have the if uh, else operator. And of course, we can use multiple ternary uh, op operators inside of them to actually do multiple of these things as we would uh, with an else if else if. 
But uh, what about actually setting properties of an object? Which one of these is actually correct? We've got a two. And we'll, well, it's fine. Yeah, it's indeed true. Correct. You're doing great, don't worry. Um, that one is a syntax error. That one, again, you cannot try to the property. And this one is false because we do have set that. What about simplifying this, which again is a code block which was uh, sent to you in theory, and it is actually getting a value from a dictionary but returning a default value if, if the value isn't there. I see a two, I see a three, which one is it? Three, three, three. Uh, yeah, it's the best one. This one also works technically, but uh, the goal is simplifying it, and this one is simpler. What about decorators? Which one is correct? Quick, 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 I don't have that much time. There's a three, there's a two, there's a one, and uh, it's actually one. We usually put decorators uh, before functions, but uh, what that does is just put that function uh, and call it with uh, the decorator. So you just call the decorator with the function that you want to create. So to summarize it up, uh, can we actually do any program in just one line? Is my statement actually true or, uh, well, considering, assuming that the try except actually works because there is a way to do that. What do you think this one is? There's a zero, there's a one, there's a zero, there's a one. Uh, it's actually one because uh, I guess that technically it should be possible. However, the best implementation I found is this one and uh, it still lacks yields and width. It should be possible to implement them, I guess, but the web page lists them as uh, open issues, open problems uh, which haven't been solved yet. So these two cases, yields and width, has, uh, hasn't actually been implemented. And we get to the second part, which is lambdas. Can we actually write everything in lambdas? Uh, just use like only lambdas in your Python program and have it output the correct value. Which one do you think it is? I see some one, some two, uh, a zero, and it's actually two. I mean, obviously, if you only have lambdas in a program, it can't even output anything. It doesn't have a print. It doesn't have anything if you can only use lambdas. So what we have to do is to do some kind of translating. We can do the logic in lambdas, but then we actually have to translate it back to values that we can actually print on the screen and work with in normal Python. So what we do is make some lambdas, do all of the code in lambdas, and then actually call these functions that we have worked with with some values, and we expect, obviously, the return value to be the one uh, that we want. So let's start with booleans. How would you define true? Again, the idea is to only use lambdas. So we take functions, and uh, there are unnamed functions, and we only want to use functions. So even these things that we get should be functions. So which one do you think it is? If you already know lambda calculus, don't answer, because I mean, it's cheating. Which one do you think it is? How would you define using a function a true value? There are some ones. Okay, this is the identity. You take a value, you return that value. But when we do this, again, we should always think, okay, but how am I actually going to translate it back to my Python nice world where everything actually works the way expected? So we could call, uh, call that function, uh, but with what? The correct answer is actually three. This is how true is usually defined. And the reason why it's defined like that is that, uh, obviously false is the same thing, but the opposite value, is that we can actually translate it back easily to what we usually call with a Boolean. So which one of these, consider considering uh, the answer I gave you earlier, do you think is right? There's one. And it's indeed correct. So we're giving both true and false to the lambda. And then 
the true uh, lambda is returning the first value, which is true. The false lambda is returning the second value, which is false. And uh, that indeed is correct. So we actually get true for the true lambda and false for the false lambda. This usually works as well in lambda calculus, but it doesn't work in Python because you have to give both um, arguments at the same time. What about or? Considering what I told you that uh, Boolean works, how would you actually implement a or? Keep in mind that the or is, uh, the return value of the or should be a Boolean, which means that it should, uh, should still get A and B, just like the Booleans we defined before. And the idea is that it should return the first value um, if it's true and the second value is if it's false. Which one of these do you think is correct? So three, let's actually try it out. So we have two values. Let's suppose that the first one is true. We're checking the first one. If it's true, then we'll return the first value because that's how we define true. And it means that it will return false. So if we use this one, and the first value is true, it's going to return this, which is false. That's not how OR works, actually. If we get, though, that option, the first value that's going to be returned is true. So if A is true, it's going to return true, and that's going to work out. If we use instead, um, if A is false, then it's going to return the second value, which is B. And if you think about it, A or B is true, if A is true, else B. This is how we could rewrite um, the OR. Very quickly, same things, but for the AND. Considering, uh, considering how the OR works, how do you think this one works? There's a one, there's a two, there's a two, another two, another two. Okay, so two is the most voted answer. So let's see. Uh, let's suppose that the first value that we get in the end is false. In this case, we return the second value because that's how false is defined, which is false. If the first value of an end is false, then it should be false as a whole, so that works. If it's actually true, if it's true, then it will return B. And if B is also true, then this whole thing is going to be true. If B is false, then it's going to be false. And for the same thing that we did for OR, A and B is B if A is true, otherwise it's false. So this is how uh, we can actually transcribe uh, an end in uh, lambda calculus. So in theory now, we could even go on and translate numbers. And the idea behind numbers is that we uh, take a function that takes a function to increment and a zero function, and then we call zero with the increment function how many times, uh, the same number of times of the number we want to represent. So zero, we have two increments, this one would be two. To make three, we had another increment. And of course, lambda calculus in itself doesn't actually have the two functions, but this is quite flexible because if we want to add five to this, we just put uh, five to the zero, which means that uh, zero is going to become five. And when we actually call this increment, increment five is going to be uh, adding uh, two to the value that we got as zero, which is five. And just by doing this, we can actually define all of the operators like sum and stuff. This one is how we defined the next value, which is just adding another increment, unlikely, usually in lambda calculus examples, they're called A and B and not inc and zero. And we can even go on and add uh, uh, make a function to actually add two numbers. Keep in mind that this is all functions, which means that a function to actually add two numbers in lambda calculus is going to take two lambdas and return another lambda. It's only lambdas. We're never actually using any value. It's only at the end where we are actually calling that lambda with, in this case, actually a Python function to increment by one and zero, and then that's going to translate it back to what we usually use in Python. 
I'm going to jump ahead a bit uh, because time's up mostly. And uh, the idea is that we can actually define all of uh, Python, all any program can be translated to Lambda calculus, assuming obviously that uh, at the end we add the translation back part of it. And if you want to learn more about this, because time is what I had, you can easily go and see some uh, Lambda calculus exp um, examples on uh, Wikipedia or anything else, but Wikipedia is already explaining uh, them pretty nicely. And they're called uh, church uh, numerals. And uh, that was it, actually. I don't remember if I have one more slide, which I do. And that's try to actually do this in one line. It's possible. The idea is that uh, I never actually told you how to do the while because of time again, but the idea is to use recursion. Uh, do you know what recursion is mostly? Yeah, so you should be able to actually translate this using recursion to make sure that it's just one line. That was it. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> if you think that you did very well, Candice are here free to claim. Hello. So, uh, I can see any any question on Slido, friends. So maybe if some of you want to ask question, you can raise the hand. Any questions? Okay, one. Hey, do uh, you use this in production? <laughs> <laughs> that's not the idea. That, that, that's not the idea. D don't. Don't, obviously. The idea is uh, the first part, uh, actually making multiple lines in just one, is useful because you actually learn, uh, if you do some code golfing, you actually learn some tricks. Uh, like, I don't know, if you have a string and you want to have that string, if a condition is true and not have it, if it's false, you can actually multiply the string uh, to the Boolean and that will work out of the box. That's the kind of stuff that uh, sometimes made you uh, make uh, your code slightly simpler. Uh, most of it, of course, won't, uh, you, you shouldn't use, but just the fact that you know how to do this actually helps. And I've seen actually a lot of people saying that uh, there are some debuggers that only accept like um, expressions inside of them, so you can actually take a complex example, run it through the one-liner uh, Python program, which, by the way, is implemented in one line because it was run on itself, obviously, and then just throw the result into that debugger. We have, t we have time for another question. Have you considered messing with async IO? Making with uh, async? Using async IO inside your Lambda functions. Honestly, no. <laughs> 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 what would happen? <laughs> I, I think about it. Uh, I never actually considered it. Okay, there is now a question on Slido. Uh, I'm reading. <coughs> As the conversion on one line, an improvement on performance? Uh, is, the, is the conversion on one line an improvement to performance? Uh, ah, sorry, yeah. Uh, uh, probably, <laughs> probably it's the opposite, <laughs> which is again why you shouldn't actually do this in production or even not, I in any case, unless you want to have some fun. Uh, there are some cases where it will improve um, or your performance, assuming that you're doing it on very small snippets, maybe there are two lines that could be simplified into one, and that will save, uh, maybe will let you call a function just one time instead of two. In that case, it's, it can be helpful, but obviously, if you just take any program, it's going to be much, much slower. I think. I think we have time for the last one. Just comment on uh, recursion and, uh, you know, the fact that in Python, I don't think tail recursion works so well, does it? Or is there any optimization that one can make? 
Uh, no, as far as I know, there is uh, no tail optimization in Python, uh, nor there is a way to implement it. Uh, as far as I know, maybe there is some uh, external patch that does this. Um, the idea, again, here is not for this to be fast. You can still do recursion if you don't have tail optimization. It's going to be slower. Uh, that's not the goal here. Um, there's also a significant overhead every time you call a Python function, so you, you generally want to avoid that. But if you're doing some, um, as an example, uh, when there's code competitions, the advent of code and stuff like that, uh, recursion can actually help you m write the program in a less time if you know how to use them and you're used to them. And in those contexts, uh, the performance don't matter, so not having tail call optimization doesn't actually, uh, is not a problem. Thanks again to Nicolò. Thanks.